Hello everyone and welcome to Blood and Hematology YouTube channel. This video is about definition, mechanisms, laboratory diagnosis and classification of anemia. Anemia is a widespread global health problem associated with poor health outcomes, increased morbidity and mortality, and substantial health and economic costs. Anemia affected nearly 2 billion people in 2021, impacting women to a greater degree than men. Anemia is not a diagnosis, but a presentation of an underlying condition. The term anemia is derived from the Greek word anemia, meaning, without blood. Anemia is defined as a decrease in hemoglobin concentration or number of erythrocytes, below the reference interval for healthy individuals of similar age, sex, and race, under similar environmental conditions. This gives rise to decreased oxygen-carrying capacity of the blood, tissue hypoxia, and the classic symptoms such as fatigue, weakness, dizziness and shortness of breath. The WHO, Normal Hemoglobin Concentrations and Cutoffs for Anemia, are widely applied globally and are sex, age, and pregnancy specific. The lifespan of the erythrocyte in the circulation is about 120 days. In a healthy individual with no anemia, each day, approximately 1% of the erythrocytes are removed from circulation due to senescence, but the bone marrow continuously produces erythrocytes to replace those lost. Erythropoiesis is the term used for marrow erythroid proliferative activity. Normal erythropoiesis occurs in the bone marrow and is under the control of the erythropoietin and other growth factors and cytokines. Ineffective and insufficient erythropoiesis, blood lose and hemolysis are the most common mechanisms of anemia. When erythropoiesis is effective, the bone marrow is able to produce functional erythrocytes that replace the daily loss of red blood cells. Ineffective erythropoiesis refers to the production of erythroid precursor cells that are defective. These defective precursors often undergo apoptosis in the bone marrow before they have a chance to mature to the reticulocyte stage and be released into the peripheral circulation. Several conditions such as megaloblastic anemia, thalassemia, and sideroblastic anemia involve ineffective erythropoiesis as a mechanism of anemia. Insufficient erythropoiesis refers to a decrease in the number of erythroid precursors in the bone marrow, resulting in decreased erythrocyte production and anemia. Many factors can lead to the decreased erythrocyte production, including a deficiency of iron, deficiency of erythropoietin, loss of the erythroid precursors due to an autoimmune reaction, or infection. Infiltration of the bone marrow with granulomas or malignant cells can also suppress erythropoiesis. Anemia can also develop as a result of acute or chronic blood loss. Increased hemolysis results in a shortened erythrocyte lifespan, thus increasing the risk for anemia. 
Numerous causes of hemolysis exist, including intrinsic defects in the erythrocyte membrane, enzyme systems, or hemoglobin, or extrinsic causes such as antibody-mediated processes, mechanical fragmentation, or infection-related destruction. To detect the presence of anemia, the medical laboratory professional performs a complete blood count, using an automated hematology analyzer to determine the erythrocyte count, hemoglobin concentration, hematocrit, erythrocyte indices, white blood cell count, and platelet count. The erythrocyte indices include the mean cell volume, mean cell hemoglobin, and mean cell hemoglobin concentration. The most important of these indices is the MCV. A measure of the average RBC volume in femtoliters. Automated hematology analyzers also provide the red cell distribution width, an index of variation of cell volume in a red blood cell population. The reticulocyte count serves as an important tool to assess the bone marrow's ability to increase erythrocyte production in response to an anemia. The adult reference interval for the reticulocyte count is 0.5 to 2.5% expressed as a percentage of the total number of erythrocytes. The newborn reference interval is 1.5 to 6%, but these values change to approximately those of an adult within a few weeks after birth. In addition, automated hematology analyzers determine the fraction of immature reticulocytes among the total circulating reticulocytes, called the immature reticulocyte fraction. The immature reticulocyte fraction is helpful in assessing early bone marrow response after treatment for anemia. An important component in the evaluation of an anemia is examination of the peripheral blood film, with particular attention to erythrocyte diameter, shape, color, and inclusions. The peripheral blood film also serves as a quality control to verify the results produced by automated analyzers. Certain shape abnormalities of diagnostic value and erythrocyte inclusions can be detected only by studying the erythrocytes on a peripheral blood film. Finally, a review of the white blood cells and platelets may help show that a more generalized bone marrow problem is leading to the anemia. For example, hypersegmented neutrophils can be seen in vitamin B12 or folate deficiency, whereas blast cells and decreased platelets may be an indication of acute leukemia. A bone marrow examination is indicated for a patient with an unexplained anemia associated with or without other cytopenias, fever of unknown origin, or suspected hematologic malignancy. A bone marrow examination evaluates hematopoiesis and can determine if there is an infiltration of abnormal cells into the bone marrow. Important findings in the bone marrow that can point to the underlying cause of the anemia include abnormal cellularity, evidence of ineffective erythropoiesis and megaloblastic changes, lack of iron, and the presence of granulomata, fibrosis, infectious agents, and tumor cells that may be inhibiting normal erythropoiesis. Other tests that can assist in the diagnosis of anemia can be performed on the bone marrow sample as well, including immunophenotyping of membrane antigens by flow cytometry, cytogenetic studies, and molecular analysis to detect specific genetic mutations and chromosome abnormalities in leukemia cells. Other laboratory tests that can assist in establishing the cause of anemia include routine urinalysis with a microscopic examination, an analysis of stool. Also, certain chemistry studies are very useful, such as serum haptoglobin, lactate dehydrogenase, unconjugated bilirubin, and renal and hepatic function tests.
the MCV is an important tool and is key in the morphologic classification of anemia. Microcytic anemia is characterized by an MCV of less than 80 femtoliters with small erythrocytes. Microcytic anemias are caused by conditions that result in reduced hemoglobin synthesis. Macrocytic anemia is characterized by an MCV greater than 100 femtoliters with large erythrocytes. Macrocytic anemias arise from conditions that result in megaloblastic or non-megaloblastic red cell development in the bone marrow. Normocytic anemia is characterized by an MCV in the range of 80 to 100 femtoliters. The erythrocyte morphology on the peripheral blood film must be examined to rule out a dimorphic population of microcytes and macrocytes that can yield a normal MCV. The absolute reticulocyte count is useful in initially classifying anemias into two categories, decreased or ineffective erythrocyte production, and excessive erythrocyte loss. The MCV can further classify the anemia into three subgroups, microcytic, normocytic, and macrocytic anemias. The excessive erythrocyte loss category includes acute hemorrhage and the hemolytic anemias with shortened erythrocyte survival. The pathophysiologic classification is based on mechanisms causing the anemia. In this classification scheme, anemias are classified into two groups, anemia caused by decreased erythrocyte production, and anemia caused by increased red blood cell destruction or loss. Some anemias have more than one pathophysiologic mechanism. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked this video, to give it a thumbs up and share it. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel, if you still have not. You can click on the bell, to receive notifications, whenever a new video is uploaded.